In this video, we are going to go through one molecule of glucose and look at how many ATPs, NADHs, and FADH2s are produced from glycolysis through the aerobic transition step and <clears throat> through the citric acid cycle. And then at the very end, we'll take all of those and basically cash them in for energy and see how many total ATPs we end up with for one glucose molecule. So I'm going to basically take this step by step and explain each step and what's going on, or at least each important step in what's happening. So let's start with step one here. We have glucose, and we see that ATP is a reactant. So glucose and ATP are reacting together in the presence of this enzyme hexokinase. And the products are ADP and glucose 6-phosphate. So starting off from step one, we are already negative one ATPs. So I'm going to write that over here on a page for one glucose, step one. ATP is consumed. Then we move on to step two. Nothing happens with ATP or NADH here. And then step three, we see that ATP again is a reactant along with fructose 6-phosphate in the presence of phosphofructokinase and ADP and fructose 1,6-bisphosphate are products. So ATP is again consumed in step three. So step three, one ATP gets consumed. And then we see this step here where we have a splitting occur. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate gets split into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Nothing happens there in terms of energy or reducing power. So there's nothing really uh, to note there as far as <clears throat> energy that's consumed or generated. In the next step, what eventually happens is dihydroxyacetone phosphate converts into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So we end up with two of these. So every step from this point forward happens twice for every one glucose. In the next step, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is a reactant along with NAD+. And NAD plus, in this instance, gets reduced. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate gets oxidized. So we end up with products NADH and 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And remember, since this happens twice, we're going to say that in step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, step 6, we have two NADHs produced. Just kind of showing you what I'm writing down here. Just keeping track of all of my ATPs and NADHs. And then 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate reacts with ADP in the presence of phosphoglycerate kinase, and one ATP is produced. But remember, we have two of these for every one glucose, so we actually get in step seven, two ATPs produced. And then step eight, three phosphoglycerate um, is basically just isomerized with phosphoglycerate mutase, so nothing happens there in terms of energy. And uh, in the next step, two phosphoglycerate is, um, again, nothing really happens here in terms of energy. It just basically, uh, water gets released here to, to produce phosphoenol pyruvate. Bring that into focus. <clears throat> Enolase, of course, is the enzyme here, and magnesium would be the cofactor. In the final step, this will be step 10, um, ATP gets produced again. So ADP and phosphoenol pyruvate are reactants, ATP and pyruvate are the products. So in step 10, this is the last step, two ATP are produced, because remember we have 
two phosphoamino pyruvates for every one glucose. So if we look at our summary for glycolysis, we have two ATPs consumed, we have four that are produced. So we end up netting two ATPs. So our net down here is two ATPs, oops, and two NADHs. And that's just for glycolysis. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to the aerobic transition step. Let me actually say one more thing. Two pyruvates get produced. So that's the end of glycolysis is the formation of pyruvate. In the next step, pyruvate then gets converted into acetyl-CoA. So will be the aerobic transition step. Since we have two pyruvates, this is going to happen twice. Pyruvate will combine with coenzyme A, and pyruvate gets oxidized. It gets oxidized to form acetyl-CoA and releases CO2. NAD plus is getting reduced. So our reactants are pyruvate and coenzyme A and NAD plus. Our products are CO2, NADH, and acetyl-CoA. So at the end of this step, we end up getting two additional NADHs. So this would be the aerobic transition step, and we net two NADHs here. <clears throat> now these acetyl-CoA's will then funnel into the citric acid cycle. Okay, got a lot going on with the citric acid cycle. Let's start up here. This is where acetyl-CoA comes in, combines with oxaloacetate. So these two are reactants, along with water. CoA would be a product, citrate would also be a product. Nothing happens in terms of energy production here, so we're not going to say anything about that, just that citrate is produced in the first step. Same thing with the second step, nothing happens with the energy. Isocitrate is produced in step three, however. Isocitrate is a reactant, NAD plus is a reactant, NADH would be a product, CO2 is a product, and alpha ketoglutarate is a product. Since there are two acetyl-CoA's for every one glucose, we produce two NADHs. So now we are in the citric acid cycle, and we would say step three produces two NADHs. Step four also produces two NADHs. Alpha-ketoglutarate gets converted into succinyl-CoA, and it's actually getting oxidized because NADH is getting reduced. And I didn't say that acetyl-citrate was getting oxidized as well. That's happening here because NADH is, or NAD plus is getting reduced. Same thing here, NAD plus getting reduced. So we end up with, in step four, two additional NADHs. And then in step five, GDP, an inorganic phosphate, and succinyl-CoA are our reactants. C GTP and coenzyme A succinate our products. So we get two GTPs here. That would be step five. And as we know, two GTPs really is equivalent to two ATPs. <clears throat> In step six, FAD is getting reduced to FADH2. That must mean succinate is getting oxidized to fumarate. So we end up with, in step six, two FADH2s. In step seven, water is being added to fumarate and uh, converting it into malate. So this would be a hydration reaction. And then NAD plus is getting, in the next step, step eight, NAD plus will be getting reduced. Malate will be getting oxidized to form oxaloacetate. So again, we get two additional NADHs from step eight. And then it goes, starts over again, but of course we've already accounted for the fact that 
This is going around twice because we're doubling all of our numbers around here. Now let's take a look at our summary. So we net two ATPs, two NADHs from glycolysis. Put that here. We net two NADHs for the aerobic transition step and for the citric acid cycle. We're going to get two ATPs, two, four, six NADHs, and two FADH2s. That would be the citric acid cycle. So if we add all this up together, we get six, two, two, so we end up with 10 NADHs. So if we do our total over here. 10 in ADHs, 2 FADH2s, and 2 ATPs plus 2, we end up with 4 ATPs. Now, we can take these 10 in ADHs and then the oxidative phosphorylation, the electron transport chain, we can convert these into ATP by multiplying them by 2.5. So we end up with 25 ATP from 10 in ADHs. Take our two FADH2s, multiply those by 1.5, end up with three ATPs, and then of course four additional ATPs. And our grand total is 32 ATP per glucose. <clears throat> well, I hope that was helpful um, in going through each one of those steps. And uh, that's pretty much the extent of the information that I expect you to be able to do is tell me what's going on in the step that we give you and uh, what's getting oxidized and what's getting reduced in a case where that's actually happening. And we're not going to talk about oxidation or reduction in, um, outside of having the coenzymes here, NAD or FAD. So if you see one of these, there's an oxidation or reduction going on. Otherwise, don't worry about it. All right.